Hi, what I have here on the workbench today is a Mixic MDP3000 high voltage differential probe in the MDP series. This is a newly released product from Mixic, and they provided me this unit for me to do a review. I don't know how well it shows up on camera, but the MDP series has a rather premium look and feel, as the controller box section with the BNC connector is made of metal instead of plastic. As you can see here, very, very nice finish. It feels like machine aluminum to me. And the differential amplifier section has this beautiful matte finish, and it feels really good in your hand. According to Mix6 website, this probe is originated from its cutting edge single fit technology. Dave Jones at the EEV blog did a fantastic review of Mix6 latest optical fiber probe based on some of the same technology a few weeks ago, and I'd highly recommend you check out his review. Anyway, obviously this MDP3000 is not an optical fiber probe, although Mixic did not specify which part of the probe shares in common with that state-of-the-art optical fiber probe. My suspicion is that the low-noise front-end fed amplifier must have something in common. The MDP series currently have models covering up to 150 MHz, and I was told by Mixic that a 500 MHz differential probe in the series is coming soon. Anyway, the MDP3000 I have here has times 100 and times 1000 ranges, and can measure voltages up to 3000 volts. Besides the MDP3000, Mixic also has the MDP1500 and MDP700 models, which have different attenuation factors, and can measure up to 1500 volts and 700 volts respectively. The common mode rejection ratio for the MDP series is specified up to 100 MHz, and at 100 MHz, the CMRR is still at a respectful 26 decibels. At DC, this number is greater than 80 decibels. The CMRRs of the other mixed differential probes that I had reviewed were only specified up to 1 MHz. Curiously enough though, the specification for the MDP series seemed to have skipped 1 octave, and there's no specification for the 1 MHz range. I'm not entirely sure why, but I would assume that the CMRR at 1 MHz is better than 50 decibels, just by judging from the specifications from the other models. One unique feature of the MDP series is that it has a 5 MHz bandwidth limit switch, and this will come in handy at removing unwanted higher frequency noise, which I will demonstrate later. It doesn't appear that this series is widely available just yet, but I was told it should cost somewhere in the upper $300 range. And considering the specifications, this is certainly not expensive for quality differential probes. Besides the probes, you also get a pair of these flexible grabbers that are very nice and high quality. And also you get a pair of elevator clips, so you can clip onto the circuitry you are measuring. Of course, because of the probe is powered, it also comes with a USB-C cable for the power. There is no multimeter style probes included with the MDP series, however, at least not with the MDP3000. Now, for me, I rarely use these multimeter style probes with a differential probe, especially when dealing with high voltage live circuits, as you don't want the tip to slip while you are doing the measurement. So the most secure way is you either use the probe to grab onto something or clip onto something, but not poking around willy-nilly. And by the way, the reason you want to use a differential probe is to measure differential signals, meaning signals that are referenced to each other instead of the ground. This is especially useful if you are trying to analyze a small signal on top of a very large common mode signal or a large DC offset. Now, the majority of the oscilloscopes are earth referenced, so you can't just hook up the ground clip to a non-ground potential test point. Otherwise, you will create a short circuit, which could be very dangerous to you and the equipment. Of course, you could use both channels and use the mathematical functions to subtract one channel from the other and therefore obtain your differential signal. Or you could use a portable scope and use a single channel, since the ground on a portable oscilloscope is not earth referenced. It can stay afloat. But neither of these methods can achieve a high common mode rejection ratio, and that's why precision measurements must be done with a differential probe, where both signal paths are closely matched to ensure the best common mode rejection ratio. Anyway, let's do some real world testing. Oh, by the way, it looks like the probes I received were freshly made. You can see the date printed on a warranty card. It was from August. Now, let me briefly explain the test setup. The power supply I have here is an 01 SPM6103, and I just did a review on that. 
you can check out that review following the card up there. As I mentioned in the review and teardown video of this power supply, the main pulse transformer, which is back here, is switched by these two N-channel MOSFETs configured in a push-pull configuration. And here is the low-side MOSFET, and here is the high-side MOSFET. Now, the way O1 implemented the high-side drive is through this small pulse transformer. As a driver chip EG27324, which is a standard dual-channel driver chip, it does not have a built-in charge pump dedicated for the high side. So the high side drive mechanism is implemented with this pulse transformer here. I soldered some wires onto the board so we can hook up the differential probes. Now these grabbers are fairly large and they have metallic tips. So you don't want to directly hook them onto the MOSFETs. Anyway, this setup will cause some signal degradation in the drive waveform, but not a significant impact. Anyway, to measure the high side gate drive waveform, you will need to have very good common mode rejection ratio, as the source of the high side MOSFET has huge voltage swing during the on and off cycle of the low side MOSFET. So let's take a look at the waveforms here. As you can see here, I have plugged in the MDP3000. And by the way, the MDP3000, as mentioned earlier, has a standard BNC connector, so you can use that in conjunction with any oscilloscope, not just the mixing one that I'm using here. And besides the MDP3000, the other one I'm using is the DP113, and they are both measuring the same gate to source voltage. In real world scenario though, you probably should not do this, as this setup increases the load capacitance on the gate and also reduces the impedance. So it has some impact on the switching waveform. But this arrangement is much easier for me to show you the measurements from both of these differential probes at the same time. So first, let's take a look at the low side gate drive voltage waveform. And you can see that we have already hooked it up to the low side. Here is our gate and here is our source. And the probes are now set up. Of course, right now the output of the power supply is off and also we don't have a load yet. So let me turn it on. Let me enable the output. And now let's turn on the electronic load. Right now the voltage output is at 20 volts and we're drawing 1 amp. And keep in mind that the attenuation for the DP113 and MDP3000 are slightly different. The DP113 has attenuation of 550, whereas the MDP3000 has 101,000. So that's kind of what you see here. Right now for MDP3000, we're using the times 100, and for the DP113, we're using times 50. And again, the yellow trace is from the MDP3000, and the cyan trace is channel 2, which is from the DP113. Right now, the output current, as I said, is 1 amp. So let's change that output current, and let's see the waveform here. So let's change it to 2 amps. You can see that the waveform broadens a little bit, and 3 amps, 4 amps, 5 amps. And you can see we definitely see the effect of the load on the waveform here. So right now, let's go down. Let's do 500 milliamps. And further down to 100 milliamps, you can see the behavior of the load on the switching waveform here. So let's change it back to 1 amp. Here you can see the power supply switches at roughly 200 kilohertz, and the pulse has a width of roughly 2 microseconds. You can see that the waveforms measured by the MDP3000 is quite comparable to what is measured by the DP113. And this is somewhat to be expected, as the specs of these two different probes are pretty much identical, up to 1 MHz. So I actually would be worried if we see significant differences. But if you're measuring higher switching speed, you would benefit from the higher specified CMRR at these higher frequencies with the new MDP3000. Now let's take a look at the high side gate drive voltage waveform. You can see that now we're measuring the gate to source waveform of this high side MOSFET. Let me enable the output. And again, because of the CMR specifications of these two probes are pretty much identical at the frequencies we're measuring, I'm not expecting a huge amount of difference in waveform quality. But one feature we have on MDP3000, which we don't have on the DP113, is the ability to limit the measurement bandwidth to 5 MHz, and that should help reduce the noise on our measured waveforms here. 
Now, of course, you could set the bandwidth limit on the oscilloscope channels as well. So let's actually do that. I don't think I set a limit here. Yep, so let's limit it to 20 MHz. So that should reduce the noise a little bit, as you can see. And let's do that for channel 2 as well. And we can see that the waveform is already a little bit cleaner. And now let me turn on the 5 MHz limit on the MDP3000, and let's see if we can spot any difference here. So this is the button to enable the 5 MHz bandwidth. Compared between these two waveforms, you can see that the blips between the main gate switch and waveforms are significantly reduced with the 5 MHz limit on. So let me do that again. This is with the limit, and let's turn that off. You can see that we immediately had the spike similar to that on the DP113. And let's enable the limit again. You can see that the blips are much smaller. So this feature on the MDP3000 definitely comes in handy. Now, as to why we're seeing these blips, my suspicion is that that's actually where the low side MOSFET is being switched on and off. So let's verify that. Now I'm using the DP113 to measure the drain to source waveform of the low side MOSFET. As you can see here, these probes are from the DP113 and this red probe is measuring the drain of the MOSFET on the lower side and the black probe is measuring the source. And by the way, I had switched the range of the probe to times 500 on the DP113. As the voltage swing between the drain and source is significantly higher than the gate driving voltage. So let me turn on the output and let's take a look again. And bingo! As you can see here on the scope, that's exactly what I was suspecting. On the oscilloscope, you can probably see these two blips match up with the waveform underneath here. And by the way, this is the drain to source voltage waveform of the lower side MOSFET. If you look at the probe setting here, we have 50 volts per division. So right now the swing is roughly 300 volts. And the gate to source voltage we're measuring on the high side here, which is the yellow waveform, essentially is sitting on this huge voltage swing. So without the high common mode rejection ratio, you wouldn't be able to see the gate switching waveform that cleanly at all. And while we still have access to the circuit board of the power supply, I do want to verify what that MOSFET on the second heatsink is doing. As we suspected, that is for switching the output on and off. But let's verify that. So again, I hook up channel 2 to that MOSFET's gate. And you can see here, when the power is off, the sign trace is showing that the gate was pulled low. And let's enable the output. And as we suspected, when we turned on the output, the MOSFET was switched on. In this next test, let's get a sense of the bandwidth of this MDP differential probe. Now, because these leads are really not meant for measuring RF signals, you can't do proper termination and amplitude measurement will be meaningless. However, we can still get a sense of the signal quality at this frequency, and also we can do some relative comparison with the signal measured by the DP113. And again, you can see that on channel 1, we have the MDP3000, and channel 2, we have the DP113. Alright, let me turn on the RF signal. The signal is coming from my HP8642B RF synthesizer, and output is set at 100 MHz at 10 dBm, or roughly 2 volts peak to peak, and is terminated at output port via a through 50 ohm connector. And you can see that the acquired signal on channel 1 is a lot cleaner compared to what we have on channel 2. And let me just reduce the time base so you can see a little bit better. You can see the noise from channel 1 is a lot less than the noise on channel 2. And in fact, let's uh, increase the frequency a little bit. Let's increase it to 120 MHz. So this is right now right at 120 MHz. And because of the noise, the scope is not able to pick up the measured frequency, but you can see on the synthesizer here, it is indeed at 120 MHz, 10 dBm. Let me adjust the signal a little bit. That's on the other channel. Let's uh, do channel 1. And let's see if we can adjust the trigger. The frequency is still not able to pick up. So although there is no common mode voltage, and we can test the CMR with this setup, but we do get a sense of the measured signal quality. And you can see here, the signal quality measured by the MDP3000 is definitely superior. 
due to its reduced front end noise. Anyway, the MTP3000 differential probe did quite well in our testing. If you are in the market looking for a new differential probe, the MTP series is definitely something worth your serious consideration. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you liked the video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Your participation makes it possible for me to bring you reviews like this. I will catch up to you next time.